don't make anybody sound good. <laughs> it's been carrying me for five years. How's everybody doing? All right, let me see if I can bend down still. Um, we've got a nice service planned for tonight. We've got a communion service, and we've got a you know an announcement, uh, a few announcements actually. And um, uh, I know Pastor Eddie wanted to be here for this service, and he wanted me to express his heart. You know, his job has changed a little bit, and we kind of postponed once, and we really didn't feel like we should postpone again. We felt like we should kind of um, go ahead and go forward and just express his heart and that he, he did want to be here. He will talk to you guys as we go forward, of course, and um, he'll tell you himself how he feels about everything. Um, I preached a couple weeks ago, and I know a couple people pointed out to me, like, hey, you know, you said that you, uh, you really weren't um, feeling moved by God to take over as pastor of the church, but then you just kind of left us all hanging there and didn't tell us who was going to be the pastor or what was going to happen. And uh, I have a way of doing that sometimes. I just get sidetracked. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting old or maybe I just did, did a lot of things I shouldn't have done when I was young. I don't know what it is. But um, I apologize for that. I, uh, I did want to, you know, we t we've met several times as a pastoral team and the board and, and talked about the future of the church. And, and we have expressed a little bit of that. Um, but let me just start with this. Pastor Ed was the best man I ever knew. And I didn't just say that when I came to this church. In fact, it's not why I came to this church at all. I came to this church because God called me to come to this church. And as much as I love Ed and my sister, I wouldn't have come otherwise. And I've expressed that before, and I hope that's true for all of us. Um, they were amazing people, but they're still just people. And we don't, we don't follow people. You know, the Bible warns us over and over and over again not to follow people. The people wanted a king, and they demanded Saul, and it didn't work out because it's not what God had planned. God was saying, you don't need a king. I'm right here. And there's wisdom in that. The wisdom is that you don't need someone to come up here and tell you how to do it. You have your scripture. You have the word. You have prayer, and you have a connection and a relationship with God. It's right there for you, a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's right there for you. So you don't need to wait on some guy, however anointed he is or gifted he is or how great of a speaker he is or how funny he is or whatever else to tell you how to do it. You've got to press in and find that for yourself. Um, but I go back to saying Ed was the best man I ever met. And I said that a long time ago. I said that 25 years ago to anybody I talked to about him because of many different things. But one of the things I loved about Ed was he was slow to speak. That's, that's not one of my strengths, by the way. I'm not, I'm not slow to speak. Um, he was slow to speak. He measured his words. You know, Gino had a scripture today. He was talking about, the, what was it again, Gino? What, what was it again, Gino, you gave the worship team today? Life and death is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit. And, and the scripture warns us over and over and over again about the power of the tongue. Ed was a mighty man. He walked what he talked, but he, he waited to talk. He listened to you, and he, he waited for wisdom. Uh, one of the things I loved about Ed is you could say something heavy to him, and he would just kind of look at you and nod and walk away, <laughs> not say anything to you at all. And I love that. That takes discipline. It takes self-control to do that, and it's an admirable thing. He was also uh, a man of great integrity, obviously, and a uh, huge, huge heart. And my sister was truly the most amazing woman I've ever met. And, you know, not many people walked closer to her than I did. So when I tell you that what you saw, however close you were to her, was what she really was, as amazing and unbelievable as that might be, it's the truth. It's the truth. It took me a while to believe it, too, because when we were growing up, she was my little sister. She was always in trouble. She was always getting me in trouble. So when she first got saved almost 30 years ago, I almost didn't believe it at first. I was like, mm, I don't know. And it took me a few years, and, and uh, I watched her just walk and do some amazing, amazing things. 
Ed was diagnosed with cancer, and shortly after that, uh, God gave them a vision to start this church. I don't know about you, but when you got seven kids and you've just been diagnosed with cancer, how many of you are running out to start a church? How many of you adding that to your list of things? You own your own business. You've got to provide for all seven kids, your wife. And God says, go do this. You, you stop for a second and just put yourself in that position and, and think about the faith that that takes to do that. Because you've got all the excuses in the world to not do it. You could stand back and go, well, hey, I must not be hearing that right. Because <laughs> you're kidding me? Really? But he did what God said. My sister in that same position, that same that potential fear that is in us in the world, to walk in that or to walk in the faith that God's got you. So they had this vision to start a church in the middle of the city. I realize we're not at all in the middle of the city right now. I can tell you that because I drive from Silverado Ranch up here every week. But we did actually with, with um, just almost miraculously had a building open up to us right in the middle of the city. I mean, if you look at a map, it's, it's literally right in the middle of the city. And uh, the church started. The river began. And uh, right from the beginning, the pastors told us this wasn't going to follow any map, that there wasn't going to be, um, you know, a church in a box approach to this, that it was going to flow according to the Spirit of God. And, um, and that's kind of how it went. And we had an open mic. Still do, really. I mean, you know, anybody has something to share or say that's on their heart. It's there. And it's been there all along, and God has honored it the whole way because we've, we've, we've honored it. We've, we've placed that ahead. And then, believe me, there's been some times. Uh, we had a homeless gentleman step up to the mic when we were at that first building, and for a second there it got a little scary because he was talking about stabbing Pastor Ed and everything else. And, and it may sound, for those of you who weren't there, that, like, that there wasn't an anointing on that, but there actually really, really was because that gentleman was talking about how angry he was with Ed for really no reason and how God changed his heart. And so it was a powerful thing for those of us that were there. We used to do a potluck after all of those first services and became real close as a church family. And then we, uh, when we moved, when that building sold, we moved to our last building. And uh, we moved from there for a time while they refurbished that building to another building and back to that building. We moved from Saturday, from Sunday to Saturday night. And uh, a lot of changes, a lot of changes. And then in that time, Pastor Ed went home to be with the Lord. And we watched his wife, who was diagnosed with cancer while he was battling cancer, um, forge ahead with the vision of the church. Now, I could stop right there and just say, what do you think our pastors would want us to do? Right? And I think it would be clear. I'll reiterate what I said the last time I preached. If you were called here, and I believe if you're here, you were called. You might believe something different, but that's what I believe. I just try to keep it simple because I'm not a real bright guy. And when I make it complicated, I get confused. And I'm not kidding. I get confused and I end up over here somewhere. Sometimes, you know, I say I'm not a real bright guy. I, I don't necessarily mean that I'm a dummy. I figure I'm probably in the upper half, okay, <laughs> somewhere. But, but sometimes we're too smart for our own good. We want to figure stuff out. And, and sometimes the wisdom is just a simple thing. It's just what's right. It's what's right in front of you. And so... I could stop right there and say it's pretty clear that we were supposed to move ahead as a church. But yet, we went through a lot, didn't we, as a church family? We went through a lot. And so um, some of us in leadership uh, stopped and thought we had to reevaluate. Is this where God wants us? Is this what God wants us to do? I know I did. I had to reevaluate. I had to see, because is, is, if God doesn't want me here, or if I'm supposed to be somewhere else, I'm going. And um, I know... When we met as a pastoral team, we were unanimously, I mean, it almost happened instantly because we kind of came in on a different note. Each of us were in kind of a different place, and it just solidified right then and there, and it was very, very clear to all of us, and there was no doubt that we were supposed to move forward as a church with the vision that Pastor Ed and Pastor Lori laid out. So then the question became, well, okay, we probably should have a senior pastor, um, and we should start to get some kind of direction. You know, I, I give um, 
my hat is off to every one of you because you've operated in really unusual and stressful circumstances. You know, Pastor Ed and Lori were very, very, um, they were people of excellence. And so every I was dotted and T was crossed, and we had people of excellence around us that were able to help them do that. And we had many team meetings. For those of you who are in leadership, you know that we had many team meetings. We used to get together all the time, and we had, uh, it was laid out. I mean, you know, Pastor Ron used to kid around. He used to go, but the whole church is here, and we're all in leadership. <laughs> Why are we having meetings? But what was great about that, see, is, is we were learning to lay it out and how to operate. It was really important. And, and now we see the wisdom in that, right? So, but as Pastor Ed went home, Pastor Lori got sick, we've kind of just been all hands on deck. We've just sort of been operating. There's been a lot of things that have kind of like children's ministry and, and other things like that where people have had to just kind of forge ahead and, and do the best they could without necessarily sometimes a lot of support. Without a lot of organization, we were all just kind of showing up and, and doing the best we could, right? And so my hat's off to you for that because you operated in obedience to God, showing up to church when it would have been what? would have been easy to go to another church and just sit down in a seat and say, yo, feed me. And how many do that, right? So, again, my hat's off to you. I, I, I love you guys. Um but it's time for a new season. It's time for a change. It's time to address some of those things. Our children are important. Children's ministry is one of the most important things in any church for so many reasons, for the security of the parents who come in here, for the children themselves because they're the next generation. Youth is very important. Youth, hey, man, give yourselves a hand. Go ahead. I know you like to give yourselves a hand, but I want you to give yourselves a hand right now. Because you've been sitting in this service, and, and, and you've been doing great. Man, you've been honoring, and you've been listening, and you've been learning. Um, but, you know, you need a service for you. You need a service that addresses the things you're going through. And uh, we're going to make an announcement there tonight as well um, regarding a youth. We're excited. We're really, really excited about your youth pastors. And um, getting back to a youth service to address those things. And, again... I don't apologize for the fact that we haven't had it because we've been following God. It's not supposed to look the way you want it to look. You can go find that anywhere you want. There's church in a box everywhere, and I'm not knocking those, okay? But I am telling you that when you're here, when God's called you here, it's very simple. Do the right thing right now. And the right thing was to what? Show up to this church Pay attention when someone's up here speaking. Learn as much as you can. Press in in your relationship to God. Be honoring. Help others. And you've done that. So amen for that. Amen. And, and we have other areas as well that we need to address. So we're going to, uh, it's a new season. Um, this church has been kind of living under a cloud in some ways from the very beginning. Right? Because our pastors were both battling cancer. There's not many churches that deal with that. As they move forward, there's not a lot of churches that have to deal with that. So I feel, as much as I miss my sister and my brother, that we're headed into a really positive, bright, amazing change. I feel the sun is right over there and that we're getting ready to come out into it. And, and there's some freedom in that. There's some freedom being able to move forward as a church and just press into the things that God's called you here without all that other stuff hanging over us, right? So we're going to do that. I did have something uh, I wanted to read to you before we move forward this announcement. I borrowed uh, Gino's Bible here. This is a scripture that Pastor Lori was standing on. Let's see if I can do this with a mic in my hand. Um, this is from 1 Peter 5. You guys remember, right? We're in 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. 
and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Um, you can see why our pastor was standing on that. But it applies to us as a church. It applies to us individually. See, nothing applies to the church. And I, when I say the church, I mean the whole church, the whole body of God around the world. That doesn't apply to an individual church. That doesn't apply to the individual in the church. See, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. What's good for the body of Christ around the world is good for you, Austin. And Jacob. Miss Linda. It's good for me. It's good for every one of us. In other words, it's not okay to just come to church and be fed. It's come to church and follow God and see where he leads you. Because that's what we're supposed to do as a body, and that doesn't happen unless we do it individually. Before that, you'll notice in uh, 1 Peter 5, at the end of verse, I can't see my eyes are pretty bad, but in verse 5, he starts off saying, before he says, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, he says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's a pretty strong statement. God opposes the proud. Pride comes in a lot of different ways. Sometimes pride is just me knowing how it's supposed to be. It's just me thinking this is how church is supposed to look. That can be pride. That can be arrogance. Humble yourself. Follow God. And it's really that simple. If we take that approach, you'll know the right thing. You don't know the right thing next week. You don't because circumstances change. But you know the right thing right now, right now. And I guarantee in five minutes, when it comes in five minutes, you'll know the right thing right then. Sometimes we've got to wait. Okay? But that's all part of that humbling ourselves. God opposes the proud. And I, I believe that God doesn't test us. The Bible tells us he's not going to test us. But opposing us means because he loves us and he cares for us. And that scripture goes on to talk about how he cares for us. What it means when it says he opposes us is that he will keep bringing you around to that circumstance until you learn, until you humble yourselves. Um, I've been humbled. Many times in my life I've been humbled, and they've all been circumstances I kind of put myself in through my own arrogance. Sometimes when I'm not humbled, when I'm not willing to be humbled, I'm humiliated. You'll notice the similarity in those words because humiliation often leads to humility. We don't have to be humiliated, though. If we press in and follow God, we can walk in humility by just not thinking we have all the answers. I lay all that out to you right now only because our church is going to move forward according to the Spirit of God. We're not going to lay it out every week any, any more than Pastor Ed and Pastor Lori did. As we all sat there, and I have already conveyed my heart to you that I wasn't feeling led to be a senior pastor, let me just say that again. I wasn't led to be a senior pastor. And let me tell you, I would have done it. My sister used to joke all the time, and Gina was just alluding to it when he was talking about the missionary there in Fiji. She used to, she used to quote me saying, because uh, I used to tell her, I'll follow God. I just hope that, that my ministry is in a mud hut in New Guinea. <laughs> I just hope, God, it isn't, but I'll go. So taking on a senior pastorship right now is crazy to me. But it isn't as crazy as taking on a senior pastor church and starting a church when you have cancer and you have seven kids. I'd have done it. But I wasn't led to do it. And I've told you before, I don't think you should ever seek leadership in the church. If you're seeking leadership in the church, you're on a slippery slope. Never seek leadership, really anywhere, but especially in the church. If it's supposed to happen, walk the way you're supposed to walk, and people will, you, you'll find that people will they'll see you as the leader that you are, and God will put you in that place. As we sat there as a team, and we went around, there was really none of us feeling led to do it, except Pastor Andre and Pastor Timberley. And it was amazing when they expressed their heart, and they really weren't sure at first. They were kind of unsure. They were going, we've really just been feeling convicted to do this. 
but they felt a lot like Ed and Lori did and a lot like us who are, who are tr- attempting to walk in humility, like, man, is this really what we're supposed to do? Because we weren't planning this. But it was funny because Pastor Ron will tell you this, and I know Eddie will tell you the same thing, and those of us, Pastor Ishmael and Martha, will tell you, um, we knew it right away. Right away. As soon as they said it, we knew it. Right? Gina will tell you. And it was just very clear. Right then and there, I just knew it. And here's, here's the reasons why. And I'm just going to express this, you guys. Um, of all the men in here, there's only a couple of us that walked with Ed. Um, as closely as I did being his brother. And Andre's one of them. And Andre and I learned so much from him. We talk about it all the time. Probably, you know, uh, when you start talking about the way we walked with him, because Pastor Ron and many others were close with Ed, but, but Andre and I uh, were especially close with Ed. And uh, maybe Gino, maybe one other, two other people. So we learned to walk in a lot of the things that he taught and mentored and discipled. They were huge on discipleship. And nobody walked closer with Pastor Lori than Pastor Timberley. And why I, I knew it right away that you guys were anointed to do this was because um, it's why I started crying at the end of the memorial when you were going on and you were talking at the end of the memorial because you were doing exactly what Lori would have done. But you were doing it in a way that was not just preaching what she preached. You were talking about how you guys have internalized this stuff and how you've walked it in your life, right? Those principles, you've walked them in your life. And, um, and I've seen such great, amazing change come in you guys, and we've talked about it. I know you guys have seen it in all of us, you know. And so it was very clear to me. And so I, I want to introduce your new senior pastors here at the River, Pastor Andre and Timberly Gray. Longest introduction ever, huh? I know that may come to uh, a shock some of you. Uh, it shocks us. Um, we are humbled and thankful uh, and grateful and um, committed. But before we get started the reason we ask you guys in particular I asked everyone to come together and get closer because we want to come down and we want to talk to you as family because that's what we consider you all okay are making us nervous. Well, you saw me last week. I was nervous, huh? <laughs> but, uh, well, you saw some of the movement. I, but the word came forth, and it came from my heart, and it wasn't me. So praise God. No matter w- the aesthetics of that and how it looked, and my wife said I kept pulling my shirt down, uh, I still had a word from God, and it still came out. But, um, wow. Um, First of all, let's, let's make it clear. Let's be authentic here. Timberly and I, uh, we didn't seek this position. We didn't post up for this position. We didn't protest this position. And we didn't, uh, we didn't initiate this position here. We weren't out there protesting. We want to be pastors of the river. Uh, and we weren't seeking this. We went to prayer. You know, um, Ed and Lori has instilled so much into us that, um, you know, we started to kind of feel, you know, convic- convicted, obligated, all these other things started happening in our mind. But we went to God. You know, our kids will tell you, uh, and the pastoral team will tell you, we weren't quick to say anything. But we knew that there was something on our life other than just where we were. Um, we prayed. We went to God, and through a lot of signs, through a lot of, uh, through a lot of signs, I like to say even wonders in some cases, in conversation with people, 
you know, they were, some just thought it was a natural progression. We were humbled. Some just said, you guys can do it, you should do it. We were humbled. We didn't, again, I like to iterate, we didn't seek this. We didn't go out and ask for this position. We didn't ask to be pastors. But we had a calling, and God told us that we needed to respond. And you know when you, when you don't respond, you're not obedient to God, you know what happens. It's like uh, I liken it to the movie Godfather Part 3 where Gino, or not Gino, Al Pacino, <laughs> he said, they keep pulling me in. They keep pulling me back, keep pulling me in. You know, and not, although that's a, a mafia thing, the principle of the matter is if you're not obedient, no matter where you go, God pulls you back in. He humbles you. He shows you things, signs and wonders, conversations, the way you feel when you go to bed, the way you feel when you wake up. So we knew, because we've always strived to be obedient, Timberly and I, to God's word, that this was our calling. You know, and I must say, in all of this, again, even then, we didn't budge. We didn't move. We didn't call the pastoral team. We didn't say, hey, you know, guess what? We're going to go ahead and step in this position. Again, we sought God for his direction. So it moved us in our heart and our spirit. And I say that with conviction because I want you all to be clear that, again, we didn't seek this position. Amen? <laughs> okay. all right. That's just for me. This is new. Thank you. This is new, so I'm just speaking my heart. And when you say keep it real, I like to say I'm just being authentic with everyone in here. Amen? I was going through my routine of getting dressed, going to work, and I had a vision. Now, my vision, you know, is just a vision. It's not as powerful as our pastors. Uh, you know, things were laid out for a hot second in this vision. But I'm sharing with Timberly, this vision came clear as day, that I saw the church moving, growing, saving souls, expanding, moving forward. Change, uh, life's ch being changed all here at the river for that hot second. And I shared it with Timberly, and she said, honey, I'm not feeling you on that one. <laughs> I don't see that. And that was amazing enough. Again, when I say a hot second, that was, I mean, I was literally in the shower like, babe, here we go. And then I got out, and then suddenly I was in fear. Suddenly I was like, oh, no, this is not something we want to do. <laughs> but just like God showed Moses the promised land. He showed also Lori a vision of getting to the other side. We talked about that last week, going to the other side. And, and there's some other things she said, but the bottom line was we were going to the other side. So it, we may not know how that looks, and we don't, but we're committed. We're committed to what they laid out. We're committed to going to the other side. Now, the other side, again, we may not make it to the other side. You know, Martin Luther King said he may not make it, but we're going that direction. That's where we're pushing forward. We want to see lives changed. We want to see more souls saved. We want more people to come to our church. We want them to know that we are a unique church of real life, real people, and what? Real God. Amen? Amen. Okay. Um, I was not feeling it. Because <laughs> um, like Pastor Grady expressed, I was tired. And as you guys know, I also do all the business for the church. So personally, I was tired, and I said, I'm just not feeling it or seeing it, and um, God began to work with me during prayer and study time. Um, I went to see Pastor Lori um, at hospice, and I shared a sticky note. No, I didn't. I have not shared this yet. I will read it to you a little later, but um, I found a sticky note in her Bible, and I took a picture of it because um, the nurse kicked me out. And uh, I was like, nobody's here but me. Um, but I took a picture of it because I wanted to take it, but it was, you know, in her Bible. Um, but I took a picture of it, and I read it later, and it wasn't until I got home that I realized what the sticky note was saying. And I'll, I'll share it with you in just a little bit. Um, but during my study time, I read the pastor's prayer that I read during the memorial service. Um, Two years ago, Pastor Lori asked me to read that passage, and I never read the prayer because my thing was that was the pastor's prayer, so that's none of my business. I'm just going to stick to what you asked me to read and internalize that for myself. And it wasn't until the day that I went to see her that I read that, and as I was reading it, um, where it said that 
she wanted the prayer was for a personal investment of someone who would make a difference in the life of others and I realized that if we just walked away that that personal investment she made in me would have been for naught because she walked with me so closely that um, I still cry to this day because I miss her greatly. And I personally can't imagine doing this without her. But, um, thank you. <laughs> but uh, in my study time, I referenced the, bi the binder, the study binder that I have at her service. My binder is broke. There's so many lessons, study notes, I like to call it, that I've written from what I've read. I met Pastor Lori over 10 years ago. And when she saw that binder, she told me that I was supposed to teach other. That binder was not for me, that I was to teach what was in that binder. I was like, Pfft. I'm not even praying in your group, let alone teaching what I wrote up here. <laughs> you know, she'd ask me to pray, and I'd tell her no. Um, and I just can't believe that here it is later that I would be doing what she asked, or what she saw, that binder sitting up on the shelf that she said it was for me to teach what was in there and not to sit up on the bookshelf, that it wasn't doing any good. So although Andre and I have had the privilege to actually sit at the table with Pastor Ed and Lori when they started the church. When they wrote the, the mission and the vision for the church, the reason we decided to go with them on this journey was because we understood what they wrote on paper, because we were the fruit of what they wanted to duplicate. We understood that the basis of the church was to be love and discipleship. And we understood unconditional love because they showed us unconditional love and we was messing up on every level and still just loved us so much and truly discipled us um, to where we are who we are today. And we understood that what they wanted to do, they wanted to duplicate. So we were in complete agreement because we were the fruit of what they wanted. And they didn't just want one set of Andre and Timberley. They wanted 20, they wanted 40, they wanted 60. It was more important to them to have 20 families than have 2,000 and not know what was going on in their lives. They wanted 20 families that they knew, that they walked with, that they prayed with, than to have a church of 2,000 people that they couldn't touch. So it was important to them that as we grew, there still had to be discipleship so that nobody was lost and nobody was out here suffering in a life circumstance by themselves that they wanted everyone to know that they had a church family and um there were just a couple do you want do you still want to hit those i know we're, uh, we've been encouraged by others to not mention the time <laughs> so i had to bite my tongue there were just a couple of the principles that they built the church on that struck a chord um, there's only four, and Andre just Andre and I just want to share those with you. Uh, as Timberley said, the core values and the ministry goals that they set up that we stayed up all night, two o'clock in the morning, with the Botters was a, a, a family that helped us start the church. Um, some one of them that stood out, and I have it here. It's amazing enough. It talks about the priority, so I would like to read it to you. It says, the priority, priorities of God will be our priorities as a church. And I'm sure some of you may f be familiar with that. God, marriage, family, ministry, and work. You know, and how fitting was it, our, at the, how fitting was it that the pastor would tell, Pastor Lloyd would tell Timberley for us to continue on that journey when we taught the, the uh, priorities and to take our time. So obviously, uh, even then, in her, where she was, she still had vision coming to her because she said, you know what, take your time and teach this. Not because, she, you know, we didn't know if she was coming out or whatever. She just said, take your time. These priorities are important. And Ed and Lori were adamant to the leadership of the church and to us that any time, I repeat, any time that the church or this ministry would interfere with your priorities, again, God, marriage, family, ministry, and church, that we were to hold things 
we were to back up and reevaluate. Reevaluate. Get some counseling. Call your brother. Call your sister. Tell them what was going on. My priorities out of whack. There's many a times that I would call Pastor Ed and just talk to him about things that were happening in my life. And he would always say the two, fir first thing he says was always was, is your wife in agreement? And I'm like, this has nothing to do with my wife right now. <laughs> this is about me and you. But he would always say that. And he said, how are your priori priorities looking like today? You know, we started Gino and a couple other, maybe a few other men, even Ron. We were at uh, Red Rock Country Club, and we were a um, little golf course, what have you, in Summerlin. And we talked about the priorities. And I think that was our first meeting before we went to the building at the Obulence, or it was the second meeting. Nonetheless, Ed was big on priorities. And again, if they interfered, if anything interfered, the ministry again, we were to step back and reevaluate. Amen? Amen? The second one was to uh, ministry goals, which was to help people see who they truly are according to the mirror of God's word. Not the mirror of their past or this world through teaching, discipleship, and relationship. Ed, Lori, we meet people right where they are, right where they were. That's what they did to us. And it meant, this meant the world to us because they taught us they discipled us, and they built a relationship with us. That was something that really stuck with us because that's why we're here today, because they built that relationship with us. All the time, they built that relationship through calls, through prayer, through coming over, through us going over there. There was a lot of things happening. And with that duplication, that's what we intend to do. We intend to strive to duplicate that with you all, with our church. We are committed to God, to our family, and to you all. Um, one of the other ministry goals is to help people of all ages identify and flow in their gifts and calling through training and discipleship. And you see the key is discipleship. That was Ed and Lori's theme, was to disciples, to disciple. And um, all ages, which is why we have a youth worship team <laughs> pretty much because everyone has a calling and it doesn't matter your age your gift and calling should be used and what they saw was if we see a gift in somebody give them the opportunity just because you go to church and you didn't go through bible school doesn't mean you can't come and speak a word so if they saw a gift or or a calling on your life they encouraged it, but they did it with discipleship and training because someone, and, and Pastor Lori would say this, somebody could say that they had the gift of prophecy, but then would speak everything they would say that God told them, and these things wouldn't come to pass. Then you end up losing credibility. So then she would encourage, there was someone in particular that was doing that, and she would pull them inside and encourage them to write it down, wait for confirmation. Just because God gives you a word doesn't mean it's for everyone. It could just be for you. <laughs> but that comes through training and discipleship, right? Well, if you are willing to be trained and willing to be discipled, that's going to come some correction, some accountability, which means are you willing to be corrected and held accountable? There were things that I would see that people would get away with in the church that I couldn't understand, but yet... If I hug on a woman the wrong way, trust me, I got a phone call the next day. And she'd say, you know, now I don't like the way you sat and talked with that young lady. And next time, this is what I want you to say. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about so-and-so? This is what they do every week. And you pulling me aside on this? And I didn't understand that, you know. And she told me, darling, I wasn't called to disciple them. I'm called to disciple you. And she said not everybody she would disciple. She said the moment somebody stopped doing what she asked them to do, that was the end of her discipleship because her time was so limited that she didn't have it to give to everybody. But she said if they're not going to do the work, if they're not willing to be corrected, if they're not willing to be held accountable, then I have to move on and spend my energy on those that are. Now that helped me 
because as a uh, director for women's ministry, I'm trying to be, you know, every, a friend to everybody. <laughs> and that got draining and taxing. And then it was affecting my time at home. And, and when I would speak to her about it, it was, you got to go back to your priorities. And then she would tell me, you need to use wisdom in who you're sowing seed and spending time with. If they're not willing to do the work, you need to love them. But then you need to spend your time with those, with those who do. Uh, the other thing is to disciple all leaders to walk in excellence and love and then empower them to train their teams to do the same. Again, she wanted to train leaders, disciple them and love them so that they can train, disciple, and love their team. Because as a pastors, we're not going to be able to touch everybody. Ed and Lori couldn't touch everybody. But the goal was we have a team. She will train, love, and disciple the team, which she's done a wonderful job with our pastoral staff. And our pastoral staff was her, her team. And then the pastoral staff is responsible for department heads, leaders, and volunteers. And so the goal is to, to disciple all leaders, walk with them, train them, love them, and then empower them, release them to do the same in their ministry. And as a department head, somebody over, let's say, Kingdom Kids. The goal would be to train your people, love them, disciple them, and then release them. Don't feel, well, I have to do it all. Release them the way she released. You know how much peace she had to be in California? It was because she knew she had a team that could be released because she walked with us, she discipled us, and then she released us. And she knew that we would walk in love, that we would disciple, and that we would lead. And those are the things that... Um, we were committed to do, which is why we came to serve with them. But this is the commitment that Pastor Andre and I are making, not only to you, but to God with his help, that we felt a conviction to walk away from all that they instilled in us. This is ludicrous for us. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Um, you guys all know our story. But we feel to walk away, we are more fearful of walking away than just doing what we feel God is calling us to do. And like Ruth, we are trusting in the responsibility, assuming the responsibility without knowing the results. Because right now it don't look that great. But we can see, or at least Pastor Andre can see. <laughs> Um, I saw. He saw. Yeah. And, and I did come around. I said, you know, babe, you are right. And I had to repent um, for that. So um, now our style may be different, but our heart for the mission is the same. Amen. We love just as much as Pastor Lori did, but we are a little more militant. <laughs> but we love you. But our style just may be just a little different. So we're asking right, that you be. That's my fault. We're you asking know, that you. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. That's okay, sweetheart. Pastor Lori always said, uh, you know, she always said the general. I know my wife said, babe, sometimes you. You're very militant when you, s you speak and teach, so you guys got to bear with me. That's just come, that's, my, that's the way I grew up. So, you know, I know that God is going to show me how to do this because I'm putting his faith, my faith in him. Yes. So yes. this is not a – we're striving for perfection. I'll never meet it, but I'm striving for it. Yes, amen. Yeah, we, we do ask for your patience because we are new at this and we believe that God will give us what we need along the way. But we're new. The church is entering a new season. So we ask that you give all of us patience as we enter this new season because we don't know what a lot of things will look like. We're going to learn as we go together in love. Um, now, with this change, sweetheart. With this change. <laughs> some things are changing. New season, new time. And we don't understand it. But with this change, <laughs> um, is, uh, they have chosen me to be senior pastor, which I'm honored and humbled, as I mentioned before. Um, that opens up a position, thank you, in our elder board, on our elder board team. Um, and just real quick, let me say, our senior pastors, Ed and Lori, set up the church where our board, elder board, were on a level playing field. And when I say that, is that the elder board were to keep the pastors, what, accountable. 
they were very big on ministry within ministry, and they were also big on accountability. So this elder board team that was equal footing with our senior pastors, again, were to keep them accountable. So they wouldn't deviate from the principles, from the values, and how this church was established. So anytime there's a deviation, that if we go astray, Pastor Grady, Pastor Ron, Reggie, Pastor Ishmael, Pastor Gino, they're going to bring that to our attention. So keep in mind, this elder board team that I'm, well, this elder position that's available of serving with along with the other men are keeping the pastors accountable. So I'm pleased to announce that our dear brother, Pastor Ed Jr., has stepped in and or stated that he will accept the elder board position that's now available. Mm. Not available, but vacant. Available. It's not a position for sale, but it's vacant. And as Pastor Grady said, he's going to share his heart. He's going to speak from his heart when he's able to make it, and we're going to give him the floor when he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with that, um, in an effort for us to move forward, um, with that, Eddie stepping in alongside with the other board members, um, we recognize the need for, um, there's a lot of things that need to be tended to. As Pastor Grady said, we all just have kind of been showing up and trying to get through the week. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things that need to be tended to. Um, but we're very prayerful about the prioritizing of all of those things because we can't come in and just fix everything. We need God to lead we need people. Um, but there's a couple things, as Pastor Grady mentioned, that are pivotal in order for us to move forward. Um, our children are the next generation. And having a solid children's ministry is important and crucial. And so we do want to announce that there has been, a, and as you know, this is a church family service. So we're going to be as authentic and transparent as we can. And I am going to apologize for the time because it's 7.56, but I'm sure we all agree that it's okay because we're having a family meeting, right? Amen. Okay, so now we're not going to be concerned about the time, right? Okay, praise God. Um, it's important, as you know, the children's ministry, we had our directors um, had not been here for quite some time. And wanting to honor the position that we served, we allow it to go on for a while because we wanted to honor, find out what was going on, and, and, and see what we can do. Um, we want to announce that we have um, selected a new children's ministry director, and that is Ms. Carol. Ooh, Ms. Carol. Carol has been with us since the beginning, has been a faithful servant, and truly loves our kids. Amen. And we thank you for stepping in in times where it seemed chaotic. But it was organized chaos, and you stepped in so lovingly, and we're so appreciative. That's right. She didn't want anyone messing with her kids. Um, but Miss Carol needs some help. She cannot do children's ministry by herself. And we have a lot of children. And we have decided to split the children up just in two groups because in the effort for us to move forward, it's important that we move forward and commit ourselves to do things that are within us to do. We don't want to exasperate ourselves. It would be great to move forward and have a class for each grade, but we're not there yet. So in the meantime, we're going to split them up with a nursery to first grade and then second to fifth grade. So right now, we are in need of a minimum of three volunteers to work with nursery through first grade. And we need a minimum of two volunteers to work with second through fifth grade. So if you have taken the connection class, if you have called the river your home, and you feel led to serve in this ministry, we are asking that after service tonight you would see Miss Carol um, to sign up, and she's going to give you some paperwork because it's important that we have a solid children's ministry team that can go on a schedule. Now, if we can get just those small amount of people, you will only have to commit to serving once a month. See, it de the work doesn't become so hard if we all play a part. And as Pastor Lori used to say, Many hands make light work, okay? Everybody's part 
big or small, is huge. Because if you think your part's not important when you don't show up, it now places a burden on the few who are already serving so much. So if you think that, mm, it's not going to matter if I don't show up to greet, well, poor Miss Linda, who's been greeting for the last three weeks, has to greet again. Or what if Miss Linda isn't here? You know? Um, I'm over the greeters in the resource center. And many times I'm teaching. The last thing I'm thinking about is, do I need to go out there and greet? So if you don't come and you think that's insignificant, it plays a huge part. Um, the other ministry that is pivotal that gets started is our youth ministry. And we are so grateful for the youth who have so patiently has stayed in service, as Pastor Grady stated. And we are happy to announce um, that we had waited for God to bring the right people for that ministry. We had waited for God to do that. And we are happy to announce that um, Mr. Terrence and Miss Erica will now be yeah. the youth ministers. Where you at, Mr. Terrence? Brother Raise your Terrence. hands. Where, see, they, right, stand up, stand up so they stand can up, see you. Woo! Ignite Youth Ministry! Woo! Okay, y'all need to be a little, I think I'm a little bit more happier than you are. <laughs> All right, now, this is pivotal. Um, the youth ministry, as excited as they are to start, they are also moving very slow in following God. They have been seeking God. They have actually known about this for a couple months now and have been working on how to get this started. Um, what we're going to do for now is start with the last Saturday of every month, Ignite Youth Ministry will meet, okay? Because the first Saturday's communion, um, what I thought was so precious, and Pastor Lori did know this before she went home to be with the Lord, um, Mr. Terrence and Ms. Erica voiced that it was pivotal that they still spent one or two services in the service, that they couldn't be a youth minister and not be fed and pastor Lori loved that because to think that you can just go teach and not ever have a need to come and be fed with your church family as pastor Grady said is somebody that's really filled with pride seeking leadership and they weren't asking for it we approached them and asked them to to pray about it and so we are so grateful um, for not only stepping into what God has called you to do but fulfilling such a need that we have and because of your heart for kids, obviously with your tribe, that uh, <laughs> we know that that's going to be exuberated. And so now they also recognize that they can't do this without a team, that they would like some youth minister volunteers to come and help and serve alongside them because they are going to have junior youth and youth, and there will be times that they want to split junior youth and youth. Well, they can't do that if they don't have any help. So if you feel that God has called you to serve with the youth and you have taken the connection class and you call the river your home, we're also asking that you would see Miss Erica after service. Um, fill up the sign-up sheet. She's going to hand you some paperwork. And there will be a youth ministry volunteer meeting on the 24th, which is a Saturday. It'll be before service starts to get you in preparation to assist them the following week for the first youth ministry. Does that sound exciting? Does that sound exciting, Norca? <laughs> you know, I want to read something that uh, is a little off, uh, off the cuff here. But um, this is something that was, um, I saw this on a Facebook post. And it's, it's, it stuck with me for a while, but it also allowed me to go into the depth of what it actually means. And I am going to put Norco on blast. Uh, she asked me a question last week. And my answer to that question is God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And that's something I Facebooked her. But I said that to say, and my wife doesn't always like me to say this, and I've been only saying it lately. We don't feel qualified, but we believe and trust God and have faith that he's going to what? Qualify us. We have the heart. We have the heart. We, we want to we go wherever God wants us to go. We want to do whatever God wants us to do. So I think that right there is a calling. Now, he's going to qualify us to take us to the next level, wherever that may be. He's going to take us. 
because we have that heart. We're obedient and we're seeking him. So I encourage you, Norica, when I sent that to you, to really dwell on that. Amen. So with that said, with Terrence stepping up as a youth minister and I'm stepping up as pastor, that leaves some other vacancies. And that vacancy is in the usher department. Amen. Now we're going to do what we have to do until <laughs> things change. We get more men, bodies in the church, what have you, as we grow. But I do want to, yes, Thomas, let, you know what? Let's give it up big round for uh, Thomas. He has served diligently in the usher department it, along with Terrence, and he's been a true blessing. So I, I like to ask the men, you know, really seek God about that department. It's an awesome department. You, you see how I was with our pastor. You know, I was tuned into her. Every move she made all the time where it was like she was someone was hugging her one day and she was like, I thought you were going to do something to him. <laughs> you know, it was a it was, she, he was hugging her a little too long, it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> and I didn't really know what to do, but I knew that it couldn't be any longer than <laughs> Ooh, woo, come on, brother, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and she saw that, but she said she appreciated that. And that was my heart there anyway. So on, a, on another note, we are looking that department is opening up, so any man seeking to serve in that department, we will be training and teaching. So you, you don't, again, have to be qualified to be an usher. You just have to be a man. Well, you don't have to be a man, per se, but we would prefer that you're a male, per, a male figure <laughs> stepping into this department because it requires a lot of work, and we will teach and train you. All you have to do is have the heart. Mm. Amen? Amen. Now, with this and... You know, when I discuss business, now I'm going to have to stand. Um, with this, this does lead us to some church business with the passing of our pastor. And um, because I do the finances and the business for the church, um, there are some things that we want to be transparent about, and we always have. Um, one of the scriptures that we used when we had spoken before is 2 Corinthians 8.21 that says, For we take thought beforehand and aim to be honest and absolutely above suspicion, not only in the sight of the Lord, but in the sight of men, that we have always kept the way we handled business as a church upright so that we can be and are ready to be audited at any time, even if somebody in our own church questions the funds. Um, we are above suspicion. The things that we have placed put in place is the protection of the tithes and offerings that come in and how the finances are handled. Um, so there were some business items that when Pastor Lori went home to be with the Lord that had to be tended to. And so with that, um, as you know, we've talked about our tithes and offerings and how we had a period of time where they were down and we did an extensive teaching as our desire was to help Pastor Lori um, prior to her going home with the Lord. And we were able to do that. But as Pastor Lori began to get um, experience more challenges and started spending more time away, our offerings started to go down further, which is just, just a reflection. Our pastor wasn't here. A lot of people weren't here. Well, that became difficult sometimes to meet the commitment we made to her. Now, when I said everybody's part, big or small, is important, when you say, my $20 offering doesn't matter, and your neighbor says, my $20 offering doesn't matter, and that person next to him says, my $20 offering doesn't matter, it matters. And there were times where we didn't have the whole amount we committed to helping her. And we begin to speak about what we paid for this building was beginning to exasperate us. And it was more important for us to do the things God called us to do than give everything we had for the building. Would you agree? So with this change, and, and we had, I had an opportunity to speak with Pastor Lori about this prior, not knowing um, that it was close to her time of going with the Lord, but we had already set a meeting in place with TCMI to discuss renegotiating our lease. And so with this change, it has placed us in a position to accelerate that. 
Now, there are some differences. We do want to clarify some things. Some things may have been spoken, some things you could have overheard. There are some differences that we have with TCMI, and we knew that from the begin very beginning, but that never affected the way that we entered into this agreement to lease this building. But it had become very clear that it's time for us to go. We are in a new season. We are paying more than um, what we should for our size congregation and for the offerings that are coming in. And in order for us to move forward, we have mentioned, Pastor Grady has mentioned that we would desire to be a Sunday morning service. To grow as a church, we would need to go back to Sunday morning. Well, to do that, we can't do that in this building either, right? They have services, two services <laughs> in the morning. So we have already given notice with TCMI. And technically, that notice is for August 30th. Now, we have not found a place yet. We have been in pursuit of a building. Um, we have not found a place yet. When we say pursuit, we've literally dro driven. We have driven. We have been to. We have we talked even to. We've passed <laughs> our other area just looking to see what yeah. they can, yeah, what's we, vacant out there. We actually we've been on the road traveling. We actually spoke with our previous landlord because he owned that whole building and um, informed us that that building is now going back to the bank. So um, we... That building's not an option. We've explored many options. And right now, as it stands, we don't have a place. Okay, so this is where we are. We negotiated when we gave the lease with TCMI a month to month in case we don't find something. Uh, but that's only been extended to us until October 31st. But the, the renegotiation was starting in September, we would renegotiate at a lower rate. Because if we continue to just give all that we have, we can't even get the means to get out of here. <laughs> so that's been negotiated. So while that brings us some peace, it would be great if we found something the sooner the better. And it would be great if we found something on Sunday morning. So we're sharing this with you to be in prayer. Because our willingness to move forward is also going to be that God is going to have to show up and provide a place for us to move forward. Now, although we don't know the results, we are s assuming responsibility to say, we understand, we're moving forward, we love God, we love people. God's going to have to provide the building. Um, we are trying to find something that costs less, and the way our financials look, we may not be in a position to just go out and sublease or lease our own place, which means we may end up in another sublease position, which makes the search difficult when a church is already on Sunday morning. So that's what we're up against, and that's what we've been looking for. But now, as our church family, you know where we're going, and you can be in specific prayer for what we need. And so moving forward is not about Andre and I. Moving forward is about this church. If you have called the river your home, then you made a commitment to the church to pray for all of us, to love all of us, to serve all of us, to bring our tithes into this storehouse so that we can all meet the call that the river has been given. It's not up to the pastoral team to do that. This is our church. So that sticky note that I found in Pastor Lori's Bible it said, a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. And at first, when I first looked down and it said a small body, I thought she was made a statement about her physical body. Then the nurse came and told me to leave. So I took a picture. When I got home, I looked at it, and it was a small body of determined spirits Fired by an unquenchable faith. So what we're asking is, if you would join us as a small body with an unquenchable faith, regardless of everything we have been through as a church, so that we can move forward with the mission that has already been laid out, that the Lord gave Pastor Ed and Lori, then we can alter the, the course of history. There are a lot of people that are watching us, looking to see what we're going to do, looking to see if we're going to fail, and we're not going to be moved by it. We're going to move forward. 
And if we are unified, it doesn't matter how small we are. And so with that, we want to open it up to any questions that you may have. Comments? Concerns? We're, we want to, you, you have um, so patiently just showed up every week and just went with the flow. But we want to allow you the opportunity to express whatever's on your heart. If you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have a concern about things that you have been wondering and was never afraid to ask, or about the future, we want to open it up and address them so that we can move forward where there's no doubt in anybody's mind and that there's clarity. Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> what is the thought process about going to a Sunday morning versus Saturday night, how we've been? Well, we have been a Saturday night service for quite some time and our numbers do not reflect a lot of growth. We've lost a lot of people because they work on Saturday nights, even some of the people on our own team. Um, Pastor Eddie, one of them, working on Saturday nights, which makes it difficult for them to be here. In order for us to grow, we need to go back to a Sunday morning. Now, eventually, we can always add a Saturday night service, but to grow a church, it would be crucial that we go back. We went to Saturday night when we began subleasing our other building. Otherwise, we would have stayed a Sunday service. So that's the mindset. Now, the timing, we would like a Sunday morning. We'll have to see what we get. It would be really hard to have service at like 2 or 3 o'clock because families have already started their day. Um, evening, if it was just an evening service, that would be difficult because now we've got school getting started. So to grow, if we could do a Sunday morning that's more traditional to get families in, and as we grow and expand, we can always add a Saturday evening. Ed and Lori didn't mind doing that, but then that meant all of us would have been there both times because we need more people so we can have two teams, a Sunday team and a Saturday team. But great question. Does that answer it? It answers it, but you don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Note taken. <laughs> That's even more to be in prayer. Do you have a question, Joel? No? Yeah. Well, they can't hear you. Oh. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, I was just wondering, are you still going to have to do all the business of the church and pastor? Is that what it is? Yes. <laughs> At least for the time being. At least for the time being. My daughter asked the same question. Um, you know, when we said this is ludicrous, for us it is because there's no, nothing involved. There's no monetary value <laughs> in stepping into this position. It's more work for same nothing. <laughs> but uh, we love God and we love people. Um, you know what? For us as a family, it was an answer to prayer because I had already, just so that you know how we were not seeking this, I had already started looking for other work and um, really thought that, you know, when Pastor Lori went home, that I fulfilled my obligation. And that um, I had been working for the church for six years on a minimal salary, working a lot of hours, and I never took a vacation for six years. And a lot of you don't know that, because e nobody can do what I do. <laughs> and um, I just felt like I was done. And I was online submitting an application. The Lord told me, this is before we even considered um, praying about stepping in this role. The Lord told me to put it down that I wasn't finished. And I couldn't understand that because as a family, I needed to go back to work. And um, Andre was never, when I told him that happened that day, he was never in agreement with me looking for another job because he felt the reason I started feeling much better was because I was at home. And if I had the stress of having to go into an office or something, that uh, he just wasn't peaceful with that. And when we sat down and talked with our kids, we had told them that although there's nothing, you know, what's in it for you, there's nothing in it for us <laughs> except for the excitement of seeing people grow, um, that mom can still work at home part-time. And so, yes, I'm doing the business for the church and glad to do the business for the church. And um, as we grow, we do see that we'll eventually have a staff, and that would be awesome to have a staff for somebody who can do that and I don't have to w do that and study and women's ministry and da 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 but for now we are willing to step into that that role 
So, and how ironic that is that I've been doing it from the very beginning. If I had to step into that role and assume that at the same time, we probably wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, so. No questions? Comments? Concerns? Concerns? Well, thank, thank you, Norca. You, Norca. Tim has a question. Oh. I'm happy to too. <laughs> what, what happens in the event of <laughs> things going past the 30th? If, are we still going to be here? or? Yeah. We'll be here until October 31st. We can go month to month until October 31st. So if we're still here August 30th, we have September and we have October. Um, okay, D, this could be an answer to your prayer. There are many churches we have been in relationship with that if we had to go to a Saturday night, that's quite easy. So push come to shove. October 15th, well, I'm not going to say October 15th because we found this place two weeks before and the same building was two weeks before. Come October 30th, <laughs> if we haven't found something, there are a few churches we've been in relationship with that if we had to go to a Saturday night, I'm sure they'd be wi willing to sublease to us on a Saturday night if push came to shove. But the desire of our heart is really if we could, could do that, that would be just great. So.